Hi guys, in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I created this liquid bilayer in Blender 4.2. And so, some backstory. I actually created this structure sometime in October last year. It was one of the first few things I made in Blender, and now doing it in 4.2, a lot has changed. A lot has changed. Blender has changed since then. I don't remember what version coming out at the time. I think 3.5 or 0.6, but some of the methods that I used back then have changed a little bit and it's nothing too vast it's just minor differences like the membrane proteins that I used for the structure I directly import them from the PDB database like actually downloading the .pdb file and importing it into Blender I didn't do that this time just use you can actually just use molecular nodes but besides that I don't think anything else has changed besides a couple of geometry nodes here and there maybe changing names or being deleted or replaced you know the whole blender thing it's how it works it changes a lot i'm not so sure how relevant this tutorial will be in the next couple of years or even the next couple of months it might not be relevant next year a lot changes but i hope this gives you an idea of how to go about making these types of structures in blender and we're going to start by actually making we're creating the phospholipid structure, which consists of a hydrophobic tail and a hydrophilic head. So without further ado, let's get started. So starting in our empty scene, I'm going to start by adding an icosphere and going into the edit mode and adding two subdivisions. So I'm going to subdivide and come down here and increase that, the number of cuts, pardon, to two. That looks pretty good. I'm going to go into the front facing view and just select a couple faces, kind of like so, and on the other side as well. And then like so. Actually, maybe these ones here would be better. Alright, these will form the basis of... Just a quick disclaimer here, there's some of the footage that's missing, but how I got to creating the phospholipid tails is I extruded the faces that I selected and three times actually, and that's how I got that. So, in case you're wondering. So now I'm just going to tap out of edit mode and go into the modifiers tab, add a subdivision surface, and there you have it starting to look a little more like a, a phospholipid. And just increase that to maybe four. Oh, it looks pretty good um, but I won't have that in the viewport I can just leave it at one for now and increase it in the render to about four okay great so now that we have this all set up I can also shade smooth and you can actually go back into edit mode. I like to go back into edit mode and just play around with the tails a little bit because it looks a little too straight, too uniform. And I mean, in nature, that's just not how they look. So I'm gonna play around with the tails a little bit just by selecting, actually let me go into edge select and Select the transparent view and I'm just going to select some of the edges on the tails and move those around maybe along the X, kind of like that. Maybe this one, we can move that, slide that up and maybe move that along the X as well like so select that one move that up there 
move that along the Y, maybe extend one because they're not the same length. They vary in length, size. You could choose to maybe scale a certain part just by a little bit. So just make it as irregular as you possibly can, but still noticeable, right? That's kind of the goal. So maybe we can scale that a little bit. Maybe scale that inwards. Scale that as well. Okay. When we tap out of edit mode, this is what we get. Alright, cool. Awesome. We're starting to see something. Alright, great. So, to actually start making our bilipid layer, I started by adding a plane subdividing it, adding a displace modifier, thus giving it the wavy look, the wavy effect, and applied that. It's very important to apply it before getting into geometry nodes. And so once I was done with that, I got into geometry nodes and added a distribute points on faces. Changed that to Poisson disk, and you can see here the minimum distance between each phospholipid I chose was 0 0.045 and the max distance was, um, max density, pardon me, was 460. And that I found to be pretty okay. You can change this depending on what the type of look you're going for. And then next I added an instance on points. So... I'm looking for an object to instance and not just a bunch of random points. So I added an instance on points and to the instance I added object info. This is where I end up selecting the phospholipid which we want to instance on our plane. And the scale, this is again up to you for 0 0.4, 0 0.04 worked really well for me. And that's what I decided to go with. And next, I decided to add a transform geometry. And here, I just added the scale or edited the scale to about 0.5. That seemed to work really well. And I think probably the most important part is rotating the instances because when you actually instance these on the plane, they won't be facing in the right direction. So this is where this node comes in, the rotate instances. And you need this to rotate the lipids in the direction that you're, um, that you're looking for, which is the phospholipid tails, at least for the layer that's on the outside of the cell, of the cell pardon, the phospholipid tails have to be facing towards the inside of the cell. And this is assuming the outside of the cell is on top and the inside is at the bottom. So the tails facing the inside and the layer that's on the inside, its phospholipid tails have to be facing the outside of the cell. So in this case, I just added a random value with uh, a vector data type and these were the values that seemed to work for me at the minimum I had 7 negative 0 0.0 0 0.3 and then at the max I had 6.5 0 and 4.7 and so to make the second part of our bilayer, I added another, or I just rather copied the rotate instances and the random value. That will give us 
a second layer or a second part of the layer but between the transform geometry and the rotate instances i added a translate instances and this just tells us where you want to move it within the space so in this case you probably just want to move it along the z-axis it doesn't have to move um along the y or the x along the z-axis is fine and that's how you get your lipid bilayer and this is pretty much the basis for the rest of our bilayer you can actually copy this these entire nodes from the distribute points on faces up until maybe the rotate instances or right up to here really the transform geometry you can copy those and just paste them up here again and from the input geometry input into the geometry output you can add your protein or whatever structure you'd like to place on your lipid bilayer so for my materials especially for the phospholipid this is what was set up of course i don't remember this part because over the past couple of months geometry nodes has changed i made this in i think october of 2023 and blender has changed quite a bit since then so the nodes have also changed but i would say just add a simple color maybe increase or decrease the roughness and subsurface you can increase that that's what i use to get the look all of this is not as necessary it looks quite complicated now because obviously versions have changed and um the file changed to adapt to 4.0 so i think i made this maybe in i don't know i, I don't know what version existed back in October 2023 could have been 3.2 or 3.5 or something like that but quite a bit has changed and I think that's my only problem with blender is it changes a lot so I don't even know if this tutorial is going to be relevant maybe next year or in December things could change again and I think that's the only problem I have with um with blender Things just, they change way too much to the point tutorials sometimes just become useless because they either remove, remove a node, rename it, and you can't find it, and it's just, it's, it's a mess. So, yeah, I won't go too deep into materials. I think that's up to your own personal choice. So, I think I'm done. For the video but if you have any questions in the comments I'm definitely gonna answer those I love answering your questions I love getting your feedback I don't have a mic so I'm just using my laptop as <laughs> I'm just using my laptop's default mic at the moment so I don't know when I'll get that fixed but Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like the video, please hit the like. If you dislike it, hit the dislike and tell me why. Tell me what I could improve on. If you have any questions, just type them in the comments below. Of course, this wasn't like a typical tutorial that I would do like step by step, but this was just giving you a basic idea of how I went about it and of course actually I will mention that here for the proteins I did not use geometry nodes at the time because it was still pretty new and getting that to work on macbook was hell so I never actually got to install it so I actually installed the pdb file as it was from the pdb database into blender so that's how i worked around that i wasn't using molecular nodes in the beginning so 
I think that's about the only thing. Now you have molecular nodes, you can import that using molecular nodes and easily get the job done. It's actually so much better with molecular nodes. Who knows? I might, maybe, I think I could make another tutorial, like a, like a, like a new tutorial on how I would do it with the, all the Blender advancements. I think that would be cool. So, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys so much for being here, the support. Love you guys. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.